My images are overexposed. What is F number? What is the effect of changing F number? If you have all those queries and questions, we'll help you fine tune the camera exposure to get the desired result. Welcome everyone to Nikon DSLR tutorial. As in the last session, we discussed about the advantages of DSLRs and how you can make use of your DSLRs. In this episode, we'll be talking about exposure, which is the basis of creating good images. Now, in this episode, we'll discuss the concepts about analyzing the light and how you can make use of light to get a properly exposed image. Let's talk about exposure. Exposure technically is based on three parameters that is aperture, shutter speed and ISO. If we define exposure, exposure is basically allowing just enough light onto the light sensitive medium to ensure the subject is captured with the same level of illumination as it is. So when we talk about light sensitive medium in DSLR, the light sensitive medium is your camera image sensor. So let's have a look at these three images. The first image that you see is over bright image. Technically, we call it as overexposed image. The second image that you see is a dark image. Technically, we call it as underexposed image. The third image that you see is properly exposed image and technically we call it as balance exposure. Talking about the first image, which is an overexposed image. Now let's see how to identify an overexposed image. As you can see from the image, the brighter part of the image, that is the clouds, have been blown out. All the details in the clouds have been blown out. That means an overexposed image shows you as if the brighter part of the image have been blown out and there are no details in the brighter section of the image. That is what we call an overexposed image. It is also very easy to identify underexposed images. As you can see from this image, there are no details in the shadow part of the image. This is what we call an underexposed image. Let us now talk about a balanced exposed image. Here is a perfect example of balanced exposure, wherein you can see the details in the brighter part of the image as well as the darker part of the image. This is what we call a balanced exposed image. At the beginning of this session, we spoke about exposure is based on three components, aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Let's talk about aperture and understand how it works. Aperture is basically a mechanism to control light entering the lens similar to human iris diaphragm. To make you understand aperture in a better way, I have this Nikkor 35mm DX lens which is a very good low lighting lens. Now if you take out this lens and if you see from the back side of the lens, you will see a small liver. So in order to see the aperture blades inside the lens, what you can do is you can just push this liver and you will see aperture getting widened up. This is what we call aperture of the lens. So here you have a narrow aperture and here you have a wider aperture. Comparing aperture with human iris diaphragm is very easy. Now when you move inside a cinema hall or a dark theater, initially you don't see anything, everything is pitch dark. And after some time, the human eye pupil expands so that it can absorb more light. Similarly, when you move out from a darker situation to a brighter situation, the pupil contracts. The same principle is implemented on a camera lens, which is called aperture. Basically, aperture performs two roles. One, it controls exposure and second, it controls the depth of field. Coming to the first role of aperture, that is exposure, here is an image which has been shot in low lighting situation. Now in this kind of situation, you require your aperture to be wide open. So that means you require wider aperture if you are shooting in low lighting conditions. Let's see another example of how aperture controls exposure. 
Here is an image that has been shot in bright daylight situation. Now in this kind of situation, you don't require a wider aperture. So small aperture is what is required in brightly lit situation to get properly exposed image. Let's talk about another role of aperture that is controlling the depth of field. Here is an image in which you can see the foreground as well as the background both are defocused. This is because we have used a wider aperture here. As you can see in the image, the subject that is the white horse is in focus and crisp sharp whereas the foreground as well as the background both are defocused. This has been achieved by making the aperture wide open. Keeping the same subject and the same image, if you just keep your aperture small, you will see the foreground as well as the background both will be crisp sharp. Hence, if you want foreground as well as the background in focus and sharp, you should have a small aperture. How to identify small or wider aperture? Aperture is basically denoted by F number. Smaller F number means wider aperture. Greater F number means smaller aperture. Let's refer this chart to understand aperture in a better manner. Here we have various F numbers starting from F1.4 to 2.8 and further to F22. Now as you can see from the reference images, the first image that has been shot at F1.4 is an overexposed image because this F number was too wide in the given lighting situation. As we keep on increasing the F number further to 2.8, the outcome is still better but it's an, again an overexposed image. You keep on increasing the F number, you keep on making the aperture smaller and smaller. So F5.6 is what that gives us a balanced exposed image. You keep on increasing the F number further, you will get a darker output. So depending on the lighting situation, you decide what kind of F number you should have while shooting an image. Let's see how to change F number in your camera. Here I have a Nikon D3200 mounted with 18105mm kit lens. Now on the lens itself, you'll see some markings stating 3.5 to 5.6. What does this mean? This means when you are at wide angle 18 mm the widest aperture you will get is 3.5 and when you zoom the lens to 105 mm the widest aperture you will get is 5.6 now in order to make use of it you have to switch your camera to a mode and start rotating the command dial as you keep on rotating the command dial you will see the aperture at 3.5 gives you a wider aperture opening and you keep on increasing the F number, your aperture starts becoming smaller and smaller. So at F22, probably you will have the smallest aperture. As we discussed, aperture controls both exposure as well as the depth of field. Now let's see some of the examples that will give you a brief idea about what F number shall we use in what kind of situations. Here is an image which is a landscape shot. Normally in landscape, we require both foreground as well as background crisp sharp. Now in order to do that, you should have a higher F number, of course depending on the lighting situation, so that you can get a small aperture. Now if you are looking for those cinematic effect wherein the background is totally defocused or technically speaking we have a shallow depth of field. Now in order to achieve shallow depth of field your aperture should be wide open. F4 gives you a lot of liberty to make your background totally detached from your foreground or subject. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. In next session, we will be talking about another element of exposure which is called shutter speed. Until next time, this is your Nikon buddy Abhishek Singh signing off.